Marhaba everyone. This is Tony Jamis, and I'm excited to be part of the Humans of Telecom. Hey everyone, a very warm welcome to Humans of Telecom, the Unplugged podcast. This is your host Anurag Gagarwal, Chief Growth Officer at Globe Tele Services. As you all know, this podcast takes you behind the scenes of the fast-paced world of telecom and showcases the human side of some of the most well-known individuals within this industry. And today's guest for sure is a celebrity in our space who hardly needs any introduction. I joined the telecom and CPaaS industry about a decade ago, and I can safely say that this gentleman is a pioneer in this field and someone who I've always looked up to with so much awe and admiration. In 2010, he co-founded and was a CEO of one of the biggest brands in the CPaaS space, Nexmo. I personally remember how closely I worked with Nexmo as a business partner, and I was always amazed to see the excitement and infectious energy which was found within the entire Nexmo team. Something which stood testimony to the fact that the leader must be one fantastic individual to get to know better. My assessment about his visionary nature turned out to be true, because this person led an extremely successful acquisition of Nexmo by One Edge. and has now become a future of work advocate creating a company called Oyster that has a fantastic mission which I'll let him talk about directly so without further ado please join me in welcoming tony james co-founder and ceo at oyster tony welcome to the show thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this journey we love to hear more about you which part of the world do you belong to and from where are you joining this podcast today Thank you very much Anurag for having me on the show. I am originally and from Lebanon. I was born in this small country. Uh I do consider myself as well from planet Earth and today I reside in the island of Cyprus where I'm calling you from. Wonderful Tony and it is such a pleasure to finally connect with you. I mean I've been interacting with so many people from the Nexmo team since so many years and that's been such a such an essential part of my journey so it's so good to finally interact with you so tony we'd love to know firstly a lot more about you so while i understand that you're originally from lebanon and today the journey has led you to being in cyprus where you are how has the entire journey been for tony what made you enter into the world of telecom and cpas and how have things been all this while so would love to know more about you Absolutely my my story with telecom started uh when I was in my uh early teenage years uh I was in post civil war Lebanon uh, that was that, that was in uh, in the in the early 90s and the country had after the war had no cellular network the fixed line network was was not working well so we uh we were I got caught into this uh Uh, CB radio movement in the country. We we used to use this uh, old technology to communicate, and I got obsessed with it. Um, I got really obsessed, and um, I remember uh, with my neighbor, uh, we uh, we set up a base station that was a very powerful base station, and we we start chatting with people around around the country, uh, people from very far away. some people would never met in person essentially it was the early days of social networking uh, pretty much and um and since then i uh i was i was determined to go deeper into the telecom i was obsessed with radio frequency technologies uh that's why i went to france to study computer science and and eventually telecoms at university uh i was fascinated by uh by radio frequencies technology and and eventually mobile technologies back in the early year 2000 uh was the b- the beginning of of mobile technologies and and when i graduated from school my first my first job was in in, in telecommunication i was uh, selling uh embedded software solution on pdas uh personal device assistants these were like the ancestors of smartphones uh but they were used in b2b settings let's say you were a, f- a big utility company and you need to equip your technicians with uh, smart devices uh, as they go and intervene at customers uh, premises and uh, and after that i uh i got into the sms business i got hired by 
one of the early players of SMS messaging, a company called Mblox. I'm sure you, you've heard of it, Anurag. Uh, now it's part of Cinch, was acquired by Cinch. And, um, and I, was, I was in sales at that company. And one day, uh, the company was very innovative. They, they developed a technology called APIs that was in 2007, 2008. And they gave me that project. They told me, hey, you know, go, go make it successful. And, and it was successful. Customer loved it. They were able to integrate faster. What used to take weeks now can take days. Uh, and they were able to use more modern uh, technologies instead of this older generation telecom protocols, uh, such as SMPP that we, we used to use back then. Um, but for, for reasons outside of my control, the company decided to shut down that, uh, that initiative. And then I left that company and I went to do my business school. And during that year, I was obsessed with that, with that business opportunity. So I started looking at this API for communication opportunity from all angles, from strategy, from marketing, from finance. And, um, uh, and then when I graduated, I was, uh, I was ready to start the business. Uh, and that was in 2010. I started, I started Nexmo, um, as a, as a, as a API platform for, for communication. Wonderful. And, uh, after that, how has the journey been? I mean, you know, you have successfully led Nexmo over the years and now you found Oyster. So we'd love to know more about Oyster, especially. How well is it linked to telecom and what's the mission of Oyster? Yeah, so uh, when, I, when I sold uh, Nexmo to Vonage, we, we, we merged with Vonage. Uh, the company uh, went public through that merger. Uh, I stayed there for a couple of years uh, and uh, I was really evangelizing Wall Street on the future of communication is programmable through APIs. And that, and that went really well. The company grew rapidly. It was acquired a few years ago by Ericsson for $6.5 billion, uh, the biggest acquisition of Ericsson to date. And um, so I took some time off and uh, um, I decided to look at you know, why I'm here, what is my purpose here, and how can I build a business that is more aligned with my mission in life. And I knew as well that I wanted to build a globally distributed business because at Nexmo, we were somehow distributed. We hired people in over 40 countries. And I was able to witness the power of distribution. Not only you can access the talent of the world, uh, but also uh, you can create diverse teams um, and, uh, and you can also change people's life in many emerging countries. So I was looking to build a globally distributed business and I was looking for solutions. How do we do that? How do we do that at scale? Uh, and I didn't find a solution. What I found is an industry called employer of record that was more a professional services driven industry that enables you to hire people in other countries without setting up an entity. But it was very manual, uh, very expensive. It wasn't fit for a global uh, hiring scale uh, use case. So I knew that if we use software similar to what we've done with Nexmo, essentially we lower the barrier for hiring. In the case of Nexmo, we lower the barrier for innovation so that not only telecom developer can access a network, but also software developer can access a network. And there's a hundred times more software developer than telecom developer in the world. Essentially we democratized telecommunication applications. Here we wanted to democratize global hiring through software. So I knew that if we use software to lower the barrier to entry and make global hiring as easy as local hiring, not only we can build a big business in no time, like we did with Nexmo, but also we can deliver impact in areas of brain drain reduction and uh, wealth inequality reduction. Uh, as you know, brain drain is a, one of the biggest reasons why emerging economies remain emerging because their best talent has to leave their country for better economical opportunity. So uh, I got obsessed with that macro uh, impact opportunity. And just to give you some statistics on that, uh, there are uh, 85 million jobs going unfulfilled in the West, leading to $8.5 trillion economical loss. While at the same time, you have 1 billion knowledge workers coming into the workforce in the next 10 years. The biggest 
shift in worker demographic since the industrial revolution. So it was clear to me that if you build that platform, not only you can build a big business, but you can also impact the world. And that's the mission of Oyster. The mission of Oyster is to create more equal and free world by democratizing access to job opportunities globally. Wonderful. And I'm guessing, as you said, that, you know, that with all these knowledge workers coming on board, global hiring will be such a major competitive advantage in this current economic climate. It is. Today, more than ever, global hiring is critical for the world. As I said, you know, there is this 80, 88 .5 trillion economical gap uh, that can be fulfilled with global hiring. And uh, uh, the, the, the number one uh, struggle for recruiters today is still finding talent, even in a software economy. Uh, you have pressures on CFOs and HR professionals to reduce their headcount cost. And they know that they need to go beyond their office uh, geographies to really tap into a more cost-effective talent. And last but not least, it hasn't been more harder today to create diverse workforces uh, when you're hiring within 20 mile radius from your office. So you need to go beyond that uh, to access uh, diversity. And, and at Oyster, we are probably one of the most diverse company in technology. We, are, uh, we, ha we have people in 80 countries. People are coming from all over the world to build this company. Uh, and we are gender equal across the board. Wonderful, Tony. And uh, I think in the last couple of years, especially the way things have been all, all across the world, I think uh, globalization has hit us in so many positives and negatives that it's but obvious that you would need a global workforce to be able to have that competitive advantage. Yes. Okay. All right. And on that note, uh, you know, we'd love to know firstly that in this entire fantastic journey of yours, if there is one moment or maybe a couple of moments which have been extremely memorable or impactful, would there be something that you can share with our listeners today? Well, the, the first uh, memorable event in my, uh, in my journey is to start Nexmo. I, was, uh, uh, I finished my MBA school. I was, uh, I was pretty much broke. You know, MBA schools are expensive. And um, so I had to find a job. Uh, and uh, so I found, I found, I got a job offer from uh, a major telecommunication company, like a multinational, great job. But at the same time, I had a, an ex-customer at, uh, uh, in my previous work that was, uh, he was an entrepreneur and he told me he wanted to invest in me. And uh, uh, so, so I took a chance and I uh, decided to uh, reject that job offer and, and go after starting Nexmo and trust that uh, I'll get funded. And indeed, it was challenging, but we got, we got funding, small funding that helped us to start the business. Uh, that was kind of the first uh, moment that really was an inflection point in my career. Uh, the other one is starting Oyster. And uh, I, uh, before starting Oyster, actually, I was, I was ready to start a business in, in the telecommunication space, in the platform for communication, essentially the next generation of communication platform as a service. I had the business plan ready. I had an uh, investor lined up and uh, I went on a, on a retreat to really clarify my purpose in this world. And uh, I realized that uh, my passion was in democratizing job opportunities globally. If you connect that with where I come from, from a country that is uh, essentially a failed state today, where uh, there is really no local job opportunities that are interesting. And uh, it's a country known for its diaspora. People have to leave uh, after generation after generation abroad to find better, better economical opportunities. So it was clear to me that my passion uh, back then uh, and my purpose was, was not necessarily around building the next communication platforms. Somebody else can do that. Uh, but I was particularly fit for democrat democratizing job opportunities with Oyster. So the next day after this retreat, I, I went and flipped the business to Oyster and I went and registered, incorporated Oyster in the US. And uh, that was uh, late 2019. Wonderful. So I think thanks to the retreat, I think the world got a chance to have a new fantastic mission on board and that's Oyster. So that gave you a chance to go well beyond the telecom space and touch and impact so many industries worldwide. Yeah, essentially, it's really about 
uh, following your heart versus following your mind, right? Is how do you balance these two uh, power within you? Your mind is a very powerful machine. Uh, it can process many thoughts per second. Uh, it can solve problems. Uh, but your heart is also uh, a powerful machine as well. It connects you with why you're here, who you are, and what do you want to achieve in this world. And uh, uh, this path led me, led me to Oyster. Wonderful. And, you know, that's a perfect segue to my next question when you talk about matters of the heart. So what is something which is of great passion to Tony, you know, something that helps you recharge or something that you're extremely passionate about. There's so many things that we've already known. But if I ask you for that one thing, which Tony is extremely passionate about, what would that be? I'm passionate about leadership. I believe leadership has the power to transform the world. Uh, I believe uh, leadership can uh, lead people to a better future. I believe leadership is a uh, done right and responsibly uh, can solve the biggest problem the world is facing and uh, uh, th that's that's was a, that's a recent passion of me uh, is really how do i hone my leadership capabilities how do i lead myself um, to lead others how can i build uh, a business and an organization that is healthy is uh, is uh, is flexible is uh, is really caring for the needs of, of people first and foremost and uh, and give purpose to people. How can you build a business that is mission-driven? Uh, people today are looking for more than just a paycheck. Uh, they're looking for fulfillment. They're looking to feel a sense of purpose, a sense of mission. And, uh, and that has transformed my leadership style and it continues to be a passion uh, of, of, of myself. Wonderful, Tony. That's so amazing to hear. And uh, Tony, with that, we move on to our next segment where we put up two sets of questions, two games. The first one is that I'm going to say five words to you. And for each of those words, we would love to know the first thought that comes to your mind. And as we tell all our guests to be human, be spontaneous, we'd love to hear what you think about those words. So the five words, the first one being CPAS. The first thing that comes to mind when I hear CPAS is disruption, because what CPAS did, it, it dramatically lowered the barrier to entry for millions of software developers to innovate with technology that wasn't accessible to them before and disrupted the way telecom applications are being built. All right. That's so very well said. The second one, uh, motivation. What comes to mind when I hear motivation is is impact because what what get get me out of bed every morning is a mission at Oyster is a mission to do impact in this world, and the more I'm faced with challenges, the more my determination is higher to overcome them. When I remember why I do what I do, so motivation uh, need to come through purpose and through impact. Wonderful. The third one is uh, family. What comes to mind for me when I hear family is care and protection. I have uh, three small children and for me it's about how do I create the environment for them to grow as healthy uh, and happy human beings and, uh, and protect them, protect them from the the cruelty of this world, you know, in this world, uh, it's not designed necessarily to, to address the needs of humans, whether it's school, work, uh, it's pretty tough out there. And so how can I give them the resilience and the protection to navigate their, their life uh, successfully and happily? That is such a wonderful thought. The fourth word is workplace. The first thing that comes to mind when you say a workplace is that it's not a place. <laughs> workplace is uh is 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 something work is something you do is not a place you go to uh, at oyster we have no offices we are distributed in 80 countries and uh we achieve level of productivity and belonging that never been heard of in technology so we have to rethink the workplace and uh and make it not a place that people have to commute to 
and and be in for a long period of time. A workplace is a mindset, is a is a tribe that you belong to. Doesn't matter if it's a physical place or a virtual place. Very true. I think that's very rightly put. That you're right. The workplace, the concept of place within a workplace, is something that we need to move beyond. All right, and we come to a final word where we are today: podcast influence. I use podcasts as a platform to influence others and and drive them to uh, change the way they they lead, to change the way they build businesses, to make them more sustainable business and more impactful businesses, as we're doing today. Wonderful, and I'm hoping that through our discussion, through our conversation. so many people would be impacted and i think most importantly so many ideologies should hopefully get impacted and people look at the future ways of working and are able to further see the mission of oyster to be something that is in line with how they also see their future workplaces all right and uh, the second game now tony i'm going sure. to ask you to tell us three statements two of them have to be truths one of them has to be a lie and we are hoping that all three statements are so interesting that they all appear to be lies but hopefully two of them are truths and one of them is a lie so would you have three statements for us today yes i do so statement number 1 is i recently started to play guitar statement number 2 is i'm totally obsessed with golf and statement statement number 3 is i have two birthdays like the queen of england <laughs> all right let me give it a shot out here somewhere i think i saw a picture of you with a guitar if i remember correctly so <laughs> i'm going to presume that because you are quite active on linkedin so and i follow you quite closely so i'm going to believe that you have been having a tryst with a guitar I would also like to take a chance and believe you have two birthdays so I'm going to say the third statement is also true and the second one is false which is that you're not into golf so am I right out here you're totally right you're totally <laughs> right you got them all right you know me too well <laughs> well Tony actually you don't come across as the quintessential corporate honcho who loves his or her golf so you know i mean i've seen a picture of you with a laptop sitting next to a cow so <laughs> i think you one can imagine you to be doing things which are far more exquisite than simply playing golf so that's why i took my chance at that so let's hear a bit more about that how's the experience of uh, playing a guitar getting along for you it's amazing i'm i'm actually totally obsessed with playing guitar uh it's a, it's a way for me to uh, to recharge between zoom calls it's uh i got i got the bug uh as i say and i'm totally hooked now and uh i've never played music before so for me it's like uh, really getting into music uh and you know it's also about uh, making work work for me like i don't want to be uh, uh, totally absorbed with work i want to be uh, i want to have uh, a life that uh, work supports and uh, Well, the challenge with the guitar is that I cannot take it with me everywhere, right? I mean, there are there are like portable guitars, and uh, but they are like big and heavy, and I like to travel light. So I'm considering now maybe adding to my repertoire of uh, music instrument maybe some uh, harmonica or or flute so that I can be more mobile with it as I travel. Uh, but I uh, I love the guitar. Amazing. And why does Tony have two birthdays? A uh, good, great question. uh because when i was born in 1980 uh the country was in was in a civil war and uh, the person who was in charge of to re- to register me in in the in the government official couldn't go there until like 5 days later and he forgot when i was born so he put the date of the day uh and suddenly i have these two birthdays and it's great because i have you know two parties uh you know people come you know my, like my the business friends i have that knows my birthday from like my admin passport they 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 uh uh they they send me wishes at 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 one day and then everybody else my friends and family send me a birthday so it's like i have like a week of birthday interesting exactly that's what i was going to say so there is a week long celebration in the james household 
whenever it's Tony's birthday week. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So that was an interesting conversation. And the final question of this section. So outside of all the things which you're already doing, would you have time to read or watch a movie or some TV show? And if yes, what would be some of your favorite books or movies that you can share with us? Like I totally dropped uh, video entertainment for the last few years. Like I don't have any more patience to sit down and, and watch something, but I do read a few books here and there. And one of the books that I, I really find useful for building a business is called The Infinite Game uh, by Simon Sinek, his latest book, where you have pretty much all the concentration of everything he is, he's preaching in that book. And it, it's really about how do you build a business that can sustain the test of time? Think about businesses like Disney or Apple. And at the core of these businesses is, is a few characteristics. One is about having a purpose, that is beyond making money. Secondly, is to build high trusting teams. Um, and third is to have existential flexibility in the way you build the business so you can always change and pivot easily. And, uh, and, and, and lastly is value-based leadership. How do you drive a business by, by your values? And uh, I, I'm using it every day here at Oyster. It's a pretty fascinating book. Wonderful. So I think uh, that's a fantastic recommendation. And I'm hoping many of our listeners and even I would love to check that out. All right. And with that, we come to our final section, Tony, our sign off section. So two quick questions here. Firstly, while Tony is all over the globe, but if somebody wants to try and meet Tony, so would there be any conferences or events or is there any way that one can catch up for Tony? Uh, sure. My my next three events that I'm attending and speaking at are uh, SaaS Talk in Dublin uh, in late October. There's the Web Summit in Lisbon in mid-November. And there is a Web Summit in Qatar in February next year. This would be the next three events that I'm attending. I'm frequently in the Bay Area in New York uh, to meet colleagues and investors probably once a quarter. Wonderful. And outside of that, I can personally vouch for the fact that Tony is extremely active on LinkedIn. So I think if anybody wants to reach out to Tony, that's another mechanism to definitely reach out to him or his team. Yeah. And also, I have to say that uh, uh, you're welcome to visit me in Cyprus. It's a small island of 1 million people. Um, and uh, I feel a bit lonely here. So anybody coming to Cyprus, <laughs> feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to meet you. Done deal. I think so many of our listeners are going to take you up on that offer. And hopefully we'll try and come during the birthday week so that we can enjoy celebrations right through the five days. <laughs> 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 All right. And our final question, Tony, what we call our signature question. What does being human mean to you? What sort of a human being would you want the world to remember you as? Uh, what does being human mean to me? It means that... Uh... It's about really understanding what do we need as human, right? Uh, I think there is a bit of confusion in the world about the, the basic needs of human today. We, uh, we try to, we, we are sold many things that we don't need and we overconsume, but we forget our true needs, which is safety, love, connection, compassion, care. I think this is what being human means to me is, is to connect deeply with what makes us human. But also, it's about being strong and have resiliency. And, and uh, that's the story of human is we, we've been through many, many journeys in our history uh, where we had to be strong and resilient as well. And uh, so that's what does being human mean to me? Now, now, the second part of your question was, what sort of human being would you want the world to remember you as? Uh, what I'd, like to, I'd like to be remembered as a... Uh, as a, what I call sustainable leader. What does sustainable leader mean? It means sustainable first to yourself, is to take care of yourself, to lead yourself, to be healthy physically, mentally, to be able to lead a healthy organization, but also sustainably in terms of your impact on the planet. How do you build businesses that can at least make zero negative impact on the planet and hopefully uh, deliver uh, better better impact. And, and uh, so, for instance, one of the reasons why we on Oyster, we don't have offices is that we don't require people to commute to the office. 
we uh, we adopt a lot of the asynchronous way of communication and collaboration, so we can make work possible and and productive across time zones. So there is a way to reinvent work to at least make a zero impact on the planet and uh, drive positive return uh, to the planet. Because I believe that uh, today, with everything we know about where we're headed uh, environmentally, I do believe that uh, business is the number one driver uh, of change in this world. It's not government. Uh, it's not nonprofit. It is business. And uh, leaders uh, can thrive to be more sustainable. Very true, Tony. And I think uh, that's some fabulous thoughts out there. And what's best is that what you do think is something which you are implementing and executing on the ground and which has been so very visible through both the fantastic ventures you've set up. And as I said initially, that your visionary nature is so clearly evident in the actual acts which you're doing and the wonderful organizations you're creating. So on behalf of Humans of Telecom, I'd like to thank you for taking out time and coming on the show, sharing your thoughts, telling us so much more about these new ideologies which we should adapt to. And I just wish you and the entire team at Oyster and to your family all the very best. And I do hope at some point of time, we can actually cross paths and get to meet each other as well. <laughs> Maybe in Cyprus, Anurag. Thank you very much for having me here. And I'm proud to be part of the Humans of Telecom tribe. Thank you. Thank you so much once again, Tony. And to all our wonderful listeners here, as always, thanks a lot for tuning into the show. This has definitely been a very, very special episode for me. And I do hope that it gave you a good glimpse of the human side of Tony James, someone who has had a childhood passion for technology and telecom and has followed his heart and made his mark both in the telecom CPAS space and now in the global hiring space. Someone for whom leadership is a key facet of his life and has an always learning attitude as we can see. Someone who celebrates two birthdays and has all the fun in the world in Cyprus today. And finally, someone who's making the world a much better place to live in and is harnessing the synergies of global workforce. That for us is Tony James. So, if you enjoyed today's episode, do stay tuned in because as always, we shall soon be releasing yet another episode and another compelling story from the telecom space. And do follow the podcast on your preferred streaming channel. On behalf of Humans of Telecom, this is your host Anurag Agarwal signing off for now. Take care.